It's early morning at Bowness. The sovereign and number three prepare for their day's duties. Sovereign number 44871 is a black five, built in 1945 for the London to England and Scottish Railway. Designed by Sir William Stanier, these mixed traffic locomotives were so successful that well over 800 were built. Number three is an 040 saddle tank built by Andrew Barclay of Kilmarnock in 1928. She came to the SRPS after working for the South of Scotland Electricity Board at Clyde's Mill Power Station. Number four, number 673, is also being steamed today. This C-Class North British 060 was built in 1891 for general goods traffic. It formed the most numerous class on the North British Railway. In 1915, number 673 was rebuilt and taken to France for war work, being named after Lieutenant General Maud on her return. Coaling was once tackled by hand, but modern conveyors speed up the process and make life easier for the crew. As befits a locomotive with such history and charisma, Maud is the working flagship of the SRPS. In 1980, she took part in the Rainhill Trial Centenary celebrations, and in 1984, she ushered in the return of regular steam to the West Highland Line. Shunting duties fall to diesel locomotive number 5351. An XPR Class 27 Volvo, built in Birmingham in 1961. These 72-ton diesel electrics are now withdrawn, but were once very common throughout Scotland. The Caledonian signal box is from Garn Queen South Junction near Kirkbridge, while the footbridge is from Murthley to the north of Perth. The large expanse of windows gives the signalman an excellent view. Up at the far end of the station beyond the points stands the tender of Glen Douglas, number 256. This North British K or Glen Class 440 dates from 1913 and is being restored on behalf of the Museum of Transport in Glasgow. The coaches are to serve as a stationary buffet, but first they must be shunted into place alongside the platform. It's a cold morning and the points are stiff, while across the fourth behind Long Adams Power Station, snow has fallen on the southern highlands. The dock beyond the line was once a busy harbour, with hoists to tip coal directly from the railway wagons into the holds of the waiting ships. Saddle tank number three cannot yet move under her own steam, so the class 27 lends a hand. Once in position in front of the coaches, number three comes into her own, providing the steam heating for the frame. Maud pulls out of the yard and through the station to make up the first passenger train of the day, while class 27 clears the running line.
while we wait for more to leave, the operating secretary, Peter Howell, expands on the role of the society. I'm one of the directors of the Scottish Railway Preservation Society. We were set up in 1961, just after the modernisation plan was announced, and the idea was that we would save something of steam railways for the posterity in Scotland. We had a fairly shaky start, but over the years we managed to build up this railway here at Bowness. One of the things the society has been quite good at over the years is collecting together locomotives and carriages and wagons. We believe that we have a fairly comprehensive selection of both mainline engines and industrial engines, both steam and diesel, and over the last few years we've got a fair good collection of, of mainline diesels come to us. We've also got a fairly comprehensive collection of both LMER, LMS and BR coaches, and indeed we've got two Caledonian coaches, one Great North of Scotland coach, and uh, other things of that nature. We've also got a pretty comprehensive collection of wagons, both uh, old wooden ones and more recent ones, up to the 1950s, 1960s. Amidst clouds of steam, more timely leaves for birthday. The line may be only four miles long, but on a busy weekend, the carriages are full, with about 300 passengers on each train. Pulling out along the foreshore, the line passes the site of the old pre-1956 station. There's now no trace of this. All of the sidings and timber yards which once lined the bonus shore. Before running into Kinneal, Maud crosses reclaimed land, where the railway was cut short for several years by an underground pipeline. Bowness was once a great centre of industry, producing iron, coal and timber, but all that had now seen. The final closure of Kinneal Colliery prompted the sale of the BR branch line to the Scottish Railway Preservation Society. terminus between 1986 and 88 is now only a request stop and trains rarely pause here on their way up the line. Beyond Keneal, 
A new bridge carries the A904 over the line. Here, the track joins the old branch line, and for the first time, the engine has to work hard. From here to Burkhill, the line rises 1 in 95. station is only a few years old. The building comes from money fees in Angus. The cutting here had to be widened to accommodate the station and passing loop. Passenger trains terminate at Burkhill. Beyond it, the line continues for another mile to Manor, where it joins the Edinburgh-Glasgow main line. Turn working, we join number 44871. This splendid locomotive is popular with both drivers and passengers and is never short of enthusiastic admirers. 